Life was looking good for Charlotte Morgan. She had been offered a new job and had just finished talking to a co-worker about her future plans when she went to her local gym for her evening workout on Wednesday, August 24th, at Virgin Active Gym in Chiswick Park, London. It wasn't until 9.30pm when she finished exercising and went to the locker room to get her things that her nightmare began. She discovered that the padlock she used on her locker was gone and her backpack had been stolen. Certain that nobody would have been able to figure out the code to unlock the padlock, she was convinced that somebody must have used wire cutters. However, how could a person get away with doing something like that in the open? Charlotte was about to find out that the security systems that the gym had in place were no match for a sophisticated thief. All of Charlotte's most valuable possessions were inside of her backpack. It was where she kept her cell phone, bank card, house keys, and bike lock keys, all of which were now in the thief's possession. Without her cell phone, she had no way of calling the police or reaching out to a friend or family member for help. She rushed to the front desk, where two other members stood looking concerned. They entered the gym at the same time she did, and she found out that one of them had their belongings stolen too. Another odd thing that happened when they went to check in earlier that night was that the electronic entry system was down, so they had to write their names on a piece of paper instead. With the gym not being as secure as it would typically be, her fear turned to her stolen bank card. She had to jump through many hoops to get her bank account frozen. The staff at Virgin Active refused to let her use their phone or computer, claiming it went against their security policy. Eventually, a colleague came to her aid and let her use their phone. Before she could find out if there were any unauthorized charges to her account, the call handler forced her to answer a series of security questions to confirm her identity. Once her identity was approved, she was given the long list of transactions charged to her card. Between her starting her workout and calling Satlander's hotline, thousands of pounds had been spent. Suddenly, she was helplessly watching her money be spent in real time. The first transaction was just after 8 p.m. at the Apple Store in Westfield Shopping Center, located in West London, where they spent £3,000. At around 9 p.m., they moved on to a second Apple Store on Regent Street, spending around £1,000. The last transaction was at Selfridges, where an initial £750 was charged. By the time they were able to put the hold on the account, the stores had already closed for the night. If the gym let her access her information on their computer, then she would have been able to stop the thief sooner. Santander should have noticed that the purchases being made on her card weren't normal. In fact, they were completely different from her regular spending pattern. She had never shopped at an Apple store before, let alone been to two other stores on the same night. Also, she would rarely spend a lot of money at once. She knew that there were supposed to be protections in place to stop this from happening. Shocked, she asked why the bank didn't try to stop these transactions. It turned out that texts querying the purchases were sent to her stolen phone. If she had her phone, then she would have immediately been able to stop this from happening. Instead, because the fraudster had her phone, it was easy for him to approve every single transaction and continue their shopping spree. All the while, Charlotte was left frantically trying to figure out what to do. Hoping that she reached the bank in time to stop anything else from being charged to her account, she was horrified when the call handler informed her that there was an additional pending charge of £3,000 to her account. She was watching herself getting scammed in real time. The criminal spent more money on their shopping spree than Charlotte had in her entire account. Already upset that the text checking for fraudulent payments went to her stolen phone, she didn't understand why her account didn't overdraw. It should have never been possible for so much damage to be done to her account. The Santander call handler told her that money was transferred from her savings account in increments of 2,500 pounds. Her life savings were in that savings account and could have helped her stay afloat while she waited for the rest of the charges that night to be reimbursed. Not only did someone have her bank card, but they also managed to access her entire account at Santander. Left in shock, Charlotte found herself stranded at the gym that night. The keys to unlock her bike were gone, her house keys were stolen, and she couldn't call for an Uber or reach out to her landlord without her phone. It wasn't possible to get a hotel without any money, so Charlotte resorted to spending the night at her office where she was a TV producer. She sat at her desk all night as she researched what had happened to her and tried to figure out how she would get her money and possessions back. In the morning, she contacted her landlord and he gave her a new key to her house. Then began the excruciating wait for answers. Police told her when she filed her initial report that they would get back to her in a few weeks once they reviewed the security footage and Santander said they would investigate the case too. Unfortunately, a few days after the initial incident happened, there was a long weekend that delayed the answers she desperately needed. The anticipation was so grueling that she could barely eat or sleep. Virgin Active UK refused to take responsibility for what happened, stating that they never take fault for theft. 
They claim that the turnstiles were in the middle of a quick reboot when Charlotte checked in that night, which was the reason why a member of the staff was writing down people's names as they entered. Members of Virgin Active Gym in Chiswick Park were also never told about the theft, even though another woman had her things stolen that night too. But turning off the turnstiles and just writing names is still breaking protocol for security anyways. Santander took it a step further and even blamed Charlotte for the situation. She was accused of either writing the pin number on her bank card or writing it out on a piece of paper that she kept in her bag. They went as far as saying that she must have shared the number with colleagues, friends, or a family member before they told her that she wouldn't be reimbursed for the transactions charged to her account. There was no proof that her negligence caused what happened, but the fact that her pin was used meant that Santander refused to accept the blame. She took to Twitter to share her story. She detailed the entire ordeal in a series of tweets from the card entry system not working that night to Virgin and Santander refusing to accept fault. Tens of thousands of people shared the tweets and she received a flood of responses. Local firemen offered to free her still locked bike and a nearby restaurant offered her a gift card for a free dinner. A member of Virgin Active in Chiswick Park wrote a reply where she questioned if it was safe for her to keep going there. People also sent her links to places where she could report Santander and Virgin Active UK for mishandling the entire situation. A bank security expert confirmed that the most likely thing that happened was that the thief took the SIM card out of her phone. Charlotte had so many unanswered questions. How did the thief know getting into the gym was going to be so easy? How could they have hacked her padlock? How were they then able to bypass her phone's facial recognition and passcode to gain access to her phone? How did they figure out her bank card's PIN code? How were they able to change her bank details so easily? Our question is, were they a member of the gym and just decided to do the crime since they could get in easily? Santander insisted that Charlotte was at fault and that her money was lost due to her own negligence, but a Twitter user helped Charlotte piece together one likely explanation. All the thief needed to change her bank security passwords and PIN was her bank card and the SIM card from her phone. Once they had that, they just needed to move the SIM card from Charlotte's phone into their own, where it would then bypass needing the thumbprint security or facial recognition that it would need on Charlotte's phone. However, Santander claimed that it would depend on how a user logged into the app on their phone and that they wouldn't be able to get into it without a passcode or using biometrics to obtain the PIN. They also clarified that the in-app PIN resets are common for UK banking apps and not a feature unique to Santander. A few days after Charlotte's tweets, Santander had a change of heart. The bank called her and agreed to reimburse her for the fraudulent charges. They gave Charlotte a long apology and admitted that they handled the situation poorly and were ultimately at fault. If her story didn't go viral, would Santander have given the money back? Or were they doing it just because they basically were guilt-tripped into it? Following Santander's lead, Virgin Active UK also acknowledged their role in the incident. They admitted to Twitter user at Viva Jinsu that their security machine was broken when she entered and that the staff didn't even bother checking people's memberships before letting them through. Virgin Active UK also claimed that they would do whatever it takes to win back Charlotte's trust, but it might be too late. Charlotte confessed to losing all of her trust in banks and gyms. Now she always locks her SIM card with a PIN number and separates her bank card from her phone. She was still paying off her phone when it was stolen and, as expected, she's still being held responsible for the rest of the payments, as she didn't have any phone insurance. Unfortunately for Charlotte, she still has 20 monthly payments left beginning in October of 2022. These types of simple gym thefts have apparently been becoming more common in locker rooms in London. Many people have already contacted Charlotte to say they had a similar experience after her story went viral. Charlotte's now actively advocating for change and wants to see police, gyms, and banks working together to stop anyone else from going through the same experience as her. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comments section which card you use most, your debit card or your credit card, and why.